Street Fighter is one of the OG fighting games, and it's one of the best ways to prove your skills against your mates. Button mashing may work for a while, but to really up your game, you'll need to learn a few concepts and tricks. There can be so much to learn that it's almost hard to know where to begin, but that's what we're here for. At first, it might feel like you're doing worse once you've ditched that one move you can spam forever, but with these tips, you'll improve as you learn how the game actually ticks, meaning you can counter spam from other players and hand them a beating they didn't see coming. Number one, don't forget to block, seriously. Sure, more power to you if you're able to hit that offense early in a round and KO your opponent before they even knew what hit them. But more often than not, you'll be playing against someone that knows what they're doing. If you're not blocking, they sure as hell will be. Before you know it, they'll have flipped the offense back on you and you'll be stuck in combo after combo with no way out. Hold back to block or down and back to block low and wait for your opening to strike back. Street Fighter V is closer to chess than dodgeball. Number two, you should probably jump less. For some reason, new Street Fighter players love nothing more than to jump around way too much. If I'm up here, how can they get me, you might think. But it's really as simple to punish as deploying an anti-air move. And all characters have very simple, quick anti-air attacks they can use. Jumping off that, make sure you know your own character's anti-air attacks, and you'll soon be knocking new players out of the air yourself. Number three, learn to throw, and don't overuse throws yourself. Whilst you have to worry about throws a bit less in Arcade Edition, as they were a bit too powerful in Street Fighter V's first season, you're still going to need to know how to deal with them, especially if you're starting out, as many new players overly rely on throws, which makes them ripe for punishment. Throws can only reach so far, so you can see one coming when your opponent shuffles towards you to close a small gap. When you see them do that, tap out your own throw to counter. It's a good way of getting into the habit of reading your opponent, as the reaction frames are so small for most moves that it's more about predicting what your opponent may do rather than acting on what they actually do. Number four, find the best character for you. While Street Fighter V is packed with tons of great looking characters, the truth is that you're probably not going to master them all. In fact, it's hard enough just mastering one. Rather than constantly hopping between characters, try out ones that interest you for a while and then dig down into trying to learn just one, or a few further down the line. Just taking the time to learn one character as well as you can will improve your win rate dramatically. It's probably the biggest first step you could take to getting good quick. They all handle differently, so you want to find one that just feels right to play for you. Number five, learn some simple bread and butter combos. Bread and butter combos are what we call the most basic combos a player has up their sleeve. Sure, we've all seen crazy combo videos on YouTube, but in actual competitive play, you're best off knowing a handful of simple, clean combos to the best of your ability. There's tons of character guides out there, so find one for your character and experiment and practice to find which combos you can pull off reliably. This should be a mix of combos to confirm you've hit past their blocks, anti-air to punish jumpers, and some where you can easily cancel out of them into supers for quick, easy, and fast damage. These combos will be invaluable as you play the neutral game with your opponent, the state of play where neither player has the advantage and you're both playing footsies to try to connect some hits. Bread and butter combos and a solid neutral game is the difference between pro players and newbies who just mash the same couple of specials over and over again, hoping for the best. Number six, watch your meters and know when to use them. In Street Fighter V, you have two special meters to manage during fights. The critical meter is your standard super bar you'll be familiar with from a lot of other fighters. The V meter is new to Street Fighter V and each character's V actions are unique. The critical meter, especially when it comes to using critical arts, aka the super powerful ultimate moves, does carry over. So it's best used either when you think you can use it to win a round or at the very beginning of a round to give you an advantage. Just keep your cool and monitor both meters as you fight. Losing track of them just means more lost opportunities for a comeback. They're just as important, if not 
not more important than keeping track of your health bar. Number seven, get familiar with the V meter and your character's unique V skills. You can build up a V meter faster using your character's V skill by hitting both medium punch and medium kick. These unique skills can range between being a parry to even a projectile. You can also pay one block of V meter to use a V reversal by pushing all three punches or all three kicks when guarding. This is a great way at getting your opponent off your back when you're caught in their attacks and can't get out. Finally, when the V meter is maxed out, you're gonna want to use it to activate your V trigger. Like V skills, these vary wildly between characters and you even get to pick from two options now as part of the Arcade Edition update. So make sure you're familiar with both your character's V trigger and V skill as these can give you a unique edge over your opponent. It all comes alongside making sure you know your fighters as well as you can. Consider buying a fight stick. If using a gamepad is working for you, then there's nothing to be ashamed of. Whatever makes you feel comfortable with executing your Street Fighter tricks is great. But unavoidably, you may want to consider buying an entry-level fight stick at some point. Firstly, as a six-button fighter, three types of punch and three types of kicks, and only four face buttons on a standard console pad, the game isn't really designed for a standard controller. Switching from a normal pad to a fight stick may make you feel worse at the beginning, but eventually you should feel a bit more freedom from being able to more easily execute combos across the board. There are a ton of super expensive fight sticks out there but you only need a basic one to get started if you're really getting into the game it's a great way to begin the journey to leveling up for a game this complex these tips really only scratch the surface but they should give you a better idea on how to think about the fundamentals of the game and hopefully give you the edge as you begin your journey for the title belt have your own essential tips the world should know? Share them in the comments, like us if you like, and subscribe to Ultimo Ombre for more game guides, competitive gaming, and news from our live events. See you next time. Bye.